Rebuilding a model steam plant. Part 1. The introduction. This well made model steam plant arrived in pieces over a period of time. I need to fully disassemble it before rebuilding the plant using a different configuration. You may be wondering what is the story with this plant, how did it arrive in my workshop and what am I going to do with it? One project I've been on with for a while is building a Stuart model steam plant for a customer in the USA. And that started off by giving him a quote for building a steam plant using parts that he would supply. And I'm currently still on with that because the parts supplied needed a bit of attention. He sent me a link to a video of this particular steam plant complete and running. And it's really well made. This beautifully soldered copper cap for the water tower is a bit of a work of art. And it's held in place on top of the water tower using magnets. Over a period, quite a few packages started to arrive, and in one of them was this. And when I first saw it, I couldn't really figure out what it was. It's a tank. But not just any tank, this one is made from plastic. When I removed the plastic cap, inside it was a polythene bag containing a lot of parts. When I was speaking to my customer in the USA using FaceTime, I asked him what it was, and he explained that it was a container to hold the gas tank. Of course it is, how silly of me not to know that. This view shows the layout of the components on the board, and this very small tank to the right with the pipe sticking out of it, which is in front of the dynamo, is the condenser oil trap. Immediately I am thinking that this condenser oil trap is far too small, but the larger tank that's used for housing the gas tank is perfect. But unfortunately it's made from plastic, which is not really good. But maybe if I made a copper tank that fitted inside this plastic tank, with plenty of thermal insulation, it would be okay. That is something to think about much further on in the rebuild. I can't really start this rebuild now because I have too much work in the queue. But I couldn't resist having a closer look at it. This is a PM Research boiler, there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm not going to use it in the rebuild. I'm going to be using one of the Stuart 500 range of boilers. This steam plant was originally fitted with a Stuart No. 10 and a Stuart S50. You can see the moulded mountings for these on the right hand side. I think the PM Research boiler is about the right size, but as this is a Stuart model steam plant, I'd like to use a Stuart boiler, and I'm going to use a 502. A short while ago I started a new series called In My Steam Engine Playroom and in one of the episodes in the series I had a quick look at the water tank and the Stuart No. 10V. Here's an extract from that episode. Looking in detail at this water tower there's a lot of work being required to make this. All the pieces of wood are drilled, riveted and glued together. The small pipe at the side is a dummy, the main feed pipe to the pump goes down the centre. It is very accurately made, in particular the two sets of ladders that run up the side. The cladding is held in position in quite a clever way. I'm not sure but I think the main water tower part is made from plastic. On the steam plant is a similar part designed to hide the gas canister and that's a plastic pipe. These are a nice touch, believe it or not they are turnbuckles. As you can see in this close-up shot, the wires are actually stuck to the wood because otherwise they would fall off. The close-up shot of the ladder shows its construction, very accurately made, and the rungs are tubes. If you want to see the steam plant as it was originally, please type Model Steam Engines by David into YouTube. At this point I'd like to mention that I don't know who this chap called David is. I'm assuming that he must have sold the steam plant to my customer in the USA. To the left of the water tower on the bench is this, it's a Stuart No. 10 V. The V stands for vertical. On the original steam plant, from whence it came, it was used to drive a PM Research generator. This thing really hurts my eyes, I don't like the colour of it, but that's nothing to do with it. I really hate the Mammod flywheel stuck on the other end of it as an afterthought. I have nothing against Mammod flywheels, providing they are on a Mammod steam engine. Stick one on a Stuart engine and it looks horrific. Things like this don't last long in my workshop, here I'm removing it once and for all. Someone's taken the trouble to bore the centre out and then block up the other end. It is of course all a matter of personal taste. 
but this part at the moment is not compliant with my personal taste. The other flywheel's fine, it's cast iron, whereas the one in my right hand is made of an alloy. I quickly got rid of it. And now, instantly, the engine looks a lot better. The first thing I'm going to do is see whether or not this engine runs. With the airline connected and about £20 per square inch showing on the compressor's regulator, I'm turning over the engine and it seems to be blowing quite a lot. But eventually it starts to run. And not unsurprisingly, the engine produces hardly any power. The first thing I notice in this close-up is how much hair there is stuck to the parts of the engine. I'm assuming that one or maybe both of the owners had a hairy pet. Once I slackened off the grub screw holding the eccentric sheave to the crankshaft, I did notice that it was in the wrong place. That was a quick fix, I just put the eccentric sheave in the right position and tightened the grub screw. I always start with the largest lobe of the eccentric at 90 degrees to the crank pin. Let's see if it works. I'm rerunning this clip in slow motion, and as you can hear, the air has been admitted just before top dead centre at both ends of the stroke. The slide valve is still blowing, I will sort that out in the fullness of time. The running qualities of the engine are transformed, and now there is plenty of power. And there'll be even more when the slide valve moves correctly. Looking at this installation, I realise that I tend to go a bit round the houses when I mount boilers to baseboards. This is a very simple installation. The long mounting bolts are fitted to the bottom of the boiler casing, and each of them is fitted with a nut. And then as the long bolts continue through the baseboard, they're held in place by washers and nuts underneath. And in this clip it shows the method very clearly. The boiler casing gets hot when the boiler's in use, but by mounting the boiler casing this way, it's lifted off the baseboard so there's no heat damage. It's a simple solution for mounting boilers on baseboards, and I can't believe I've never used it. There are one or two things that I didn't like about this steam plant. For instance, I don't really like the design of the boiler, which is a fire tube boiler, but heated from underneath with a gas burner directly onto the boiler barrel and then the excess heat in there travels along the fire tubes, and the fire tubes are quite large, so the water capacity of this boiler is very small. Currently the boiler is sat on the cast aluminium end plates, and I'll show this boiler in more detail in the next episode. You can also see some of the piping on the bench, it's a piping extravaganza. I think that's about it for the introduction episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.